Wildfires are bad for your health. Here's how to keep everyone safe. This video will examine the impact of wildfires on your health. A few weeks into the record-breaking wildfire season, a distraught couple brought a young boy with grave breathing difficulties to the emergency department of Randall Children's Hospital in Portland. A quick diagnosis established that he had a severe asthma attack. The attack, doctors eventually concluded, was mainly the result of exposure to the pall of smoke that had turned Portland and its surroundings into a surreal nightmare scape. Expert care and the hospital's clean air helped the boy quickly recover, and he was eventually discharged. It's not a surprise that the boy suffered such a severe attack, given the levels of wildfire-related smoke pollution in Portland and parts of the U.S. West Coast. The density of pollutants in the air in the city exceeded 400 in some days, according to an Environmental Protection Agency index, which is extremely hazardous. Typically, levels below 50 are considered safe, while levels in the 200 to 300 range are regarded as very unhealthy. Such high levels of wildfire-related smoke pollution are dangerous for everyone, and especially so for people with asthma and other respiratory conditions. The minuscule particles that fires thrust every which way can inflame lungs so much that airways close, resulting in dangerous and, in some cases, fatal respiratory distress. In the short term, smoke inhalation can damage elements of the immune system that protect lungs from pneumonia and other respiratory diseases. Such exposure is also associated with spikes in heart attacks, arrhythmia, and stroke cases, according to Dr. Mary Prunicki the Director of Air Pollution and Health Research at the Sean N. Parker Center for Allergy and Asthma Research at Stanford. Long-term effects of smoke inhalation have yet to be exhaustively studied, since wildfires tend to be contained relatively quickly. Still, data from fossil fuel pollution studies suggest that constant exposure to heavy smoke can lead to spikes in pulmonary conditions and cardiovascular problems, notes Dr. Joel Kaufman, Professor of Environmental and Occupational Health Sciences, Medicine, and Epidemiology at the University of Washington. In addition, such exposure can increase the likelihood of developing diabetes and dementia. Research also shows that it can trigger asthma in children who are genetically predisposed but wouldn't have developed the condition otherwise. Worse, it can also increase the risk of dying from COVID-19, according to a study by Eduardo Conticinia, Bruno Frediania, and Dario Carab conducted in Northern Italy. Dire stuff to be sure. So what can you do to protect yourself and your kids? The best way to protect yourself and your kids from wildfire smoke is by moving to a facility or location with clean air. If that's not possible, the next best option is to stay indoors with the windows closed. If you live in a house with faulty ceiling that allows smoke ingress, use weather stripping to seal off your windows and doors. However, even with windows closed, Wildfire smoke can still find its way into your home every time you open the door. For this reason, experts such as Colleen Reed, an assistant professor of geography at the University of Colorado Boulder, recommended that you purchase a high-efficiency particulate air filter, HEPA filter, to keep the air inside your house clean. These filters are, admittedly, costly, so if your budget can't stretch that far, find a smaller one or a portable air cleaner that can clean the room where you and your family spend most of your time. If your budget is especially tight, consider making a do-it-yourself air filter from a minimum efficiency reporting value 13 filter, MERV 13 filter, and box fan. While it may not be as effective as its manufactured counterparts, it is better than nothing at all. If you have air conditioning, you should set it to recirculate the air in your house instead of pumping in more from outside. And remember to check the filters in your air conditioner regularly, as they can become clogged by smoke particles and stop working. If you have to go outside, don an N95 or N99 mask. Cloth masks do not filter most particles found in wildfire smoke effectively, so you should only use them in a pinch. Unless absolutely necessary, avoid going outdoors if pollution levels are at 150 or higher. Do not engage in strenuous activities until the air clears. Finally, avoid frying foods, vacuuming, and other activities that can degrade the air quality in your home. Closing thoughts. Wildfire smoke is associated with a range of adverse health effects. These include a heightened risk of developing breathing problems for individuals with pre-existing respiratory problems, a greater likelihood of dying from COVID-19, and higher rates of heart attacks and other cardiovascular problems. Thankfully, a range of protective measures can help you avoid these outcomes. The most preferable is moving to a place with clean air, 
But where that's not possible, staying indoors and filtering the air in your home are the next best options. All the best and stay safe.